Hello everyone out there on YouTube. This is my first LP. My name is Eric the Thuckter. It's an old name, but I still use it. And I will be doing my first LP on Victoria 2, A House Divide. Victoria 2 is one of my personal favorites. I've been playing for quite a while. And now that I have a new Alienware, I can actually do a proper LP. And I was thinking about doing about which one the country to play for a long time. I thought about maybe the US or maybe even Canada. I am Canadian after all. Or one of the European empires. And I decided one of the easiest ones I've always done well in with is Austria. Not sure why. Maybe it's because no one likes to pick on it. But I never really had a lot of problems with it. So I'm going to try it. This is going to be a standard LP symbol just going through everything. For those of you who don't know, Victoria 2 is a strategy simulation global conquest video game. Basically it allows for a simulation of the 19th century and as a student of history this is very interesting to me. And in general it's just a very interesting time. So with that in mind, right, we'll begin this. You, uh, luckily, Austria starts off as a great power, which allows me to have influence. Now, for those of you who knew this, let me just start you off with the basics. This is the, my country. You choose a country. You get to manage all this. Production, budget, technology, politics, population, trade, diplomacy, and military. And you have varying amounts of control over these, but it's basically you get to do what you want with your country with some restrictions, especially depending on what the international community thinks of you. This is diplomacy, and what? And I'm just going to assume that most of you are familiar with Victoria too. Now there are some new things in A House Divided for uncivilized countries. Uh, it's not the same as before where you just got to a set amount of stats and a certain technologies and you did that. No, with this time, it's an actual series of reforms. Just different ones than normal. However, it's a civilized country, so we don't have to worry about that. However, public meetings, I believe that was not in the old one. I could be wrong with that, but I don't think so. And school system. In addition to these other social reforms, there's also school system, which increases education efficiency, which... Up to the point isn't really that great, but it's more immigration attraction and it works. Let's see, and of course Austria it has four different ones, two conservative ones that are pretty much the same. Don't really care about those. But for now I'm going to be a new absolutist simply because it allows me to have state capitalism. And I want to be an industrial power. That's for that's definitely. Now I'm gonna start off with building some ships because I want to take over Tunis. However, uh, however, they changed the war system in this. Instead of just uh, declaring war on whoever you wanted and if you didn't have a Kazi belly or war, an actual you reason get for infamy. the war. Instead, you can only declare war the Kazi belly. However, you can produce a Kazi belly which you go there here through justify war and you click on any of these. And now, you can actually have, uh, that infamy can change. Starts off a little bit higher than normal, for example, Conquest Y2. However, it, however, it will only be revealed after a certain amount of time, and that determines how much infamy. Watch, I'll show you. Start with that, in order to get my technology up and running. Not much has changed with technology, some are different. For instance, uh, now frame of trade is only 2020, but all these other ones... Add some too, which actually makes them really good. And uh, that's pretty much it, actually. However, uh, one good thing about running a small country is now you'll see up here that actually uh, it doubles the amount of national focus points you get from a th from your uh, primary culture, which is good, especially for the small ones. Because before, to be able to colonize Africa, just do anything with a large amount of focus points. 
you had to be in one of the really big countries, and which meant assimilation for a lot of them if you didn't already have a big culture. However, with this, that isn't much of a problem. Now, to start off with, I usually start with either medicine or ideological thought. In this case, I'll go for an ideological thought simply because I want more research points, and medicine is doesn't really have that and many. And I am going to start off with some capitalists in Osterlike. And... Sure. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well show off it, the new ones. Party loyalty. That's another thing you can change. Where if people vote for, if the people are voting for more than one party at a time, for more than one party for a number of years in any election, then they'll have a certain loyalty to that. See, remember here, right now it's neutral because they haven't voted yet. But I can change it now. I can turn it to liberal so that they'll vote liberal more often. It's not. It's good with small countries, but when you start out going to the big ones like Austria, it isn't too useful, so I probably won't be using that. However, I will be adding capitalists so that that works. Or, actually, I may just decide to put clergymen. And here's another thing. From the population menu, you can uh, choose to uh, do national focuses by province and... If you have a colony that can be turned, the lasha show up right here. However, I don't have any colonies right now, so that's not really an issue. Just add some more clergymen, because clergymen allow for research and literacy, which are both very, very good. And I will start off with these now. Doesn't require Luckily, a very Tunis large army at all. That's why pretty much any small country I start off with, I like to use it. I mean, it's not too valuable, because it's... Cause it, it's uh, well, variable amount now, but it used to be A and for me for one province, but there's a lot of people there. There is exactly 347,000, and it's a six six province region, so that's good. And now we will start. And before, and I'll set my influence because I'm a great power. Now, what I like to do for much any countries get. Pretty much every country I play is to get control of the South American ones. Because those are relatively easy, because almost no one goes after them in the early to mid game. Or even really late game. However, these are annoying, because Spain, and occasionally Britain and America, have 25 influence in that, and the AI will automatically discredit anyone who goes after them. Which, you know, makes sense. So I'll just set those, and then take them off once they're discredited. And also another good thing about Victoria 2 is it has these de these uh, map mini map buttons for there as well. So it's pie loyalty, which I already explained. Supply limit, half fast shell attri attrition, which unless you're allied with them is usually very low. Only have a core. Sphere of influence, who's actually in your sphere of influence, which is actually quite useful. And you can see who's in who's in clan influence, etc., etc. So you can see that I have these northern Italian countries as well as Germany. However, especially Saxony will be taken away very quickly because it's needed for the North German Confederation. But as long as uh, Prussia doesn't go after me, I honestly really don't care if Germany forms. I'm not going to try to form Germany here. It, I, it, it can be done. I've done previous playthroughs, but it's a pain in the butt. And these will basically remain my sphere of influence because I don't really want Germany to form. Like, I don't really care as much. North Con German Confederation a lot weaker, obviously, but it's still okay. Although, because I, while I am tempted to go after Danish Schleswig Holstein, hmm, you know what? I think I might. And know the Italian because in this, I have noticed that Italy tends to form a lot earlier just through an event, which I n noticed quite to my benefit and my happiness in my earlier playthrough of Italy. You know what? I'm going to go after Danish because I want to get into war and show what it's really like and plus, eh, it stops a kind of annoying person from forming, I guess. However, it also that means I either have to get military access through Prussia and it's one of its satellites or go the long way around, and I don't have very many ships. 
So to do this, I'm going to have a few more, even though it's going to cost a lot of money. I really like that. Budget setters, now, the reason I'm not saying much month or so, until the game system really settles into a lot of power, it's very chaotic, and there's not really much point in creating a budget. And now let's really start. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, state capitals, like I said before, I can build factories. Interventionism means you can subsidize them in case they're going broke so that they'll be good later, which is what I usually do. And laissez-faire, which makes it easier for capitalists to build them. However, unfortunately, it is not... Unfortunately, you can't build them or do anything with them, so if they're unprofitable, they'll go out and your workers get unhappy, etc., etc. Because they have a job. Oh, and also another thing that changed in House Divided is uh, factories are a lot, lot more expensive, so it's actually a significant expense to set them up. So I'm just going to hope for... I want to build some steel factories, but I don't have the money. But actually, with this, loans are actually a reasonably good idea, so I will build Bohemia. So because I'm a sucker for history, and honestly, why not? So let's go through this. Yeah, Wittenberg. See, already, craftsmen are going towards my factories, which is good. Uh, if I can increase relations with Prussia, that'll be good because I don't want to be attacked. I really don't. I can hold my own in war, but I don't really like it. And yeah, that ju it's my national stockpile is up a lot because it wants machine runs. And see, there I go. Infamy. 7.2 infamy, which is less than it would be otherwise. And actually, I've gone through some uh, war justifications where it hasn't happened at all. Now, just because it's been attacked doesn't mean I can declare war yet. See, I'm only 34% And Spain, as always, is picking on Morocco for sometimes it's Ajdi or sometimes it's Taza. But either way, it doesn't matter. Oh, look, they've already discredited me. And now I'll just ease off of that and move on to. I sometimes try, and I'll probably put one into each, into the southern German ones. But I'm going to focus on adding some. Oh, and, th oh, and one final thing I want to mention. Uh, in this, there's no longer one big Chinese empire, because they thought that was a bit too overpowered. And especially for other nations that get into the sphere of influence, because then they just dominate the game for the they just dominate the game for the rest of the wild game. So instead, it's all counts as one Chinese empire, but they're sub states. It's kind of it's kind of like satellites, but they're all counted as one state. It's really weird. So uh, you have Xinjiang, Mongolia, Qinghai. And this actually sometimes will declare independence, I think, but I'm not completely sure about that. And uh, Manchuria, Gansu, and Yunnan, and Guangxi, and of course the Chinese Empire. And Korea is a puppet, so that's kind of annoying because you still, because now Japan, if you're playing as Japan, you can't just declare war on it and have an actual state colony. And Tibet is also a puppet, so Britain can't take over away. I think part of the reason they uh, Oh, I forgot to mention that. Now uh, it's not just primary cultures, but also accepted cultures, which China, I think might have been partially because, because the there's no more, basically almost no Manchus in the empire now. Uh, except accepted cultures being part of the national focus almost became mandatory. Cause otherwise, it'd be stuck with national focus for pretty much the game. So uh, that's that, and I'm gonna go on until about March or so. Then I'm gonna end it because I don't want these videos to be too long. And as you can see, I go really fast. And I'm just going to try to get my relations up higher. I don't have enough yet, but I'm hoping... Oh, there we go. Military focus. Military access. Still no. There we go. Okay, now Denmark is pretty much screwed out of their province, which is good for me. I still have to get national access for their puppet, for their spherling, sorry, not puppet, but that should be relatively easy, and now ships, actually nothing but, now they have access, I can just get rid of these, but I'm pretty much up to my time limit. That's my, that's my girlfriend's mom, we're just sitting here, and that's how I record.
I, live, I moved in with my girlfriend a while ago. But anyways, enough about my personal life. This has been uh, Eric the Thoctar, and I will see you next time.